In 2022, a man called Eden Gasolin, nicknamed Tito and once dubbed one of the world's most prolific drug traffickers by the US government, was arrested in Dubai. He was wanted by Dutch law enforcement, but extradition failed. Within two months, he posted bail in Dubai and was released. Gasolin is originally from Sarajevo in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Dutch Bosnian national had a cocaine and amphetamine business that spanned multiple countries, importing thousands of kilograms through European ports such as Antwerp, Hamburg and Rotterdam. He was the leader of the Tito and Dino cartel, which recruited members in Bosnia and the wider Western Balkans region. He has also been laundering illicit proceeds through scores of companies across Europe. In November 2023, Gasanin was tried in absentia in Rotterdam, where an apparent deal with the prosecutor led to him being sentenced to seven years and fined $1 million. Organized criminal groups originating in the Western Balkans, such as the Tito and Dino cartel, have long been active in the Netherlands. There are a couple of reasons for this. Netherlands is Europe's largest maritime freight country and a global trading hub, with the port of Rotterdam the 10th largest container port in the world. That infrastructure and a liberal approach to drugs make the Netherlands attractive to those criminal groups. According to the Global Organized Crime Index, Netherlands has high levels of foreign criminal actors with a score of 6 out of 10. But what's most interesting is that the country has seen a significant increase on the score, 1.5 over the course of just two years. Alongside that, the levels of cocaine and synthetic drugs are extremely high. For cocaine, the Netherlands sits 21st globally with a score of 7.5 out of 10. And for synthetic drugs, it's even higher at 8 out of 10, which is 15th globally. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the impact of organized criminal groups from the Western Balkans on the Netherlands and their involvement in the illicit drugs trade. Joining me is Ingrid Hakama, an investigative journalist based in the Netherlands who writes about the environment, politics and conflict, focusing mainly on the Balkans and Africa. Ingrid, welcome to The Index. Thank you for having me. Now, my first question is, in 2018, the Netherlands was described by a senior law enforcement officer as becoming a narco state. Do you think that was a fair assessment and have things improved since then? I definitely think that is a fair assessment. Um, the trade in, uh, in drugs, in illegal narcotics is definitely booming. The number of drugs that have been seized by Dutch police have significantly increased last year. And uh, with the increased seizure of drugs, the level of violence, particularly in big cities like Amsterdam and Rotterdam, has significantly increased. Um, we're talking about violence between criminal gangs, but also kidnappings, explosions and even liquidations. Criminal gangs also use minors uh, to retrieve drugs from the port cities of Rotterdam or Flissingen. Um, which is also a recently uh, quite concerning development. Now, how long have organized criminal groups from the Western Balkans been operating in the Netherlands? Well, I think you would have to go back to the 1980s, uh, particularly in Amsterdam, where uh, groups from the Western Balkan already came. They served as hitmen. Uh, they collaborated with Dutch criminal gangs already in the drug trade. Um, and were also delivering weapons from the, the Yugoslav wars. And that collaboration has increased into the 2000s uh, and is continuing until today. Um, currently, there are uh, groups from the Western Balkan operating in the Rotterdam and Amsterdam underworld. Um, and that collaboration has long been fruitful. I think one of the most important historic cases was related to Joko Amsterdam, a Serbian criminal who collaborated very closely with Willem Hollader, one of our most famous um, drug dealers who was involved with the kidnapping of Freddy Heineke, uh, the owner of the, the big beer brewery concern Heineke. Um, so yeah, it, it, has, it has long been uh, a, a, a very fruitful collaboration between Dutch criminals and criminals from the Western Balkan. Yeah, so that's a long history and involved quite a lot of big, big names in the Netherlands as well. So on our podcast, we've discussed 
um, infamous criminal organizations like the Kavach and the Scaliari um, in a previous episode. And I understand that both clans actually operate in the Netherlands. What makes the country so attractive to organized criminals such as these from the Western Balkans? So that's a really good question. And I think there are numerous reasons why the Netherlands is so incredibly popular with criminals from the Western Balkan. I think the first reason that you also mentioned in the introduction is the fact that the Netherlands is a global trading hub. We have a massive amount of containers coming in from all over the world um, and quite a lot of corruption in the port uh, and scanning facilities of the, the ports. Uh, and because of that, uh, there is ample opportunity, uh, a lot of freight coming in, not a lot of great controls. Um, and then, of course, we're a great logistics base. Um, we are the gateway into the European Union. Uh, uh, we have a lot of transport links. It's quite easy to get drugs from the ports um, to, the, to the rest of Europe. I think a second reason um, is also, of course, that we have quite a lenient approach towards drug criminality. Um, our prison sentences aren't very long. Um, our prison conditions are really good. Uh, and of course, we have a quite advanced system when it comes to the right of defense. Um, and so you would see, for example, that storing hard drugs like cocaine could get you up to six years in prison. And the involvement of uh, minors is, is there's also really important because if they're caught, they only spend two years in prison. Uh, and of course, um, you're talking about the leader of the Dino and Tito clan who um, bargained a really great plea deal with the Dutch prosecutor's office uh, and is able to only uh, go to prison for seven years and the fine of one million uh, million euros. So in a way that really is attractive. And I think the third reason is also that we have a very well-established formal and informal um, financial system, which really allows criminals to move money very well and to whitewash their profits uh, in a very effective way. Now, according to the Organized Crime Index, the Netherlands has fairly low numbers across the board for most illicit markets, except that it scores particularly high for cocaine and synthetic drugs. Um, and Albanian organized crime groups have become particularly prevalent, um, as I understand it, alongside other foreign criminal groups um, from Morocco and Italy. Can you tell us um, or describe the scale of their operation and the position that Albanian criminal groups and others from the Western Balkans now have in the illicit drugs trade? So according to Europol, uh, groups from the Western Balkan move around one third of the cocaine imported into Europe. So that's really quite a large part. And Dutch law enforcement and police officers have told me that uh, the presence of groups from the Western Balkan is actually quite large, that they're very active, that they're very aggressive and that the problem is growing. Um, of course, each of these different groups from the Balkan have different kind of roles. Uh, they all use the port uh, in, in Rotterdam and in Flissingen to, to import drugs, but they also have their own specialties and, and their own areas of operation. So for Albanian criminals, um, they are known to be uh, particularly involved in the cocaine traffic in Rotterdam, but have also set up cocaine labs in the city of The Hague. Um, and have been involved in indoor cannabis uh, production. Uh, and they've really evolved from quite low-level dealers to quite big um, organized groups, and they have really worked themselves up in the last few years. Uh, and then you have, of course, the, the Bosnian part of the, the Western Balkan groups uh, run by largely the Dino and Tito clan in uh, the Netherlands that have set up several companies to whitewash profits here in, in Holland. Uh, and Serbian and Montenegrin criminals are also used to the, the port. So according to Dutch police, they're becoming ever uh, bigger uh, and, and more important in the Netherlands. We've discussed how the Netherlands is notorious for synthetic drugs. It's scored eight out of 10 in the OC index. Um, but what involvement do these you know, groups from Western Balkans have 
in terms of distributing these synthetic drugs around Europe and not just in the Netherlands? Yeah, that's interesting. And it did definitely have a, a large role to play in it. Um, Europol has recently set up a collaboration with 11 countries um, focused specifically on uh, the movement of, of drugs um, across Europe. And they currently have around 40 investigations into criminal groups from the Western Balkan ongoing, which tells you something about the skill. Uh, what we know also is that, uh, of course, criminal groups from the Western Balkan use, um, they, they trade the synthetic drugs from the Netherlands with other countries, uh, particularly in their home countries. So, for example, in Serbia, the majority of synthetic drugs like amphetamine, uh, MDMA, um, that is used in the, in the, in the party scene in, in the city of Belgrade, for example, uh, come from the Netherlands. So it's not only that they're distributing it across Europe, but they're also importing it to their own home countries. Wow. Yeah, that is even more concerning in how widespread um, it has become and, and with the potential of even you know getting bigger, like you were saying earlier. Now, aside from narcotics, what other illicit markets are Western Balkan criminal groups involved in? trafficking of humans, of women for the um, legalized red light districts within the Netherlands, particularly in, in Amsterdam. And also uh, these criminals are known to play quite a big role in the illegal weapon trade uh, to the Netherlands. So because the drug problems have increased, there are increased level of conflicts between different criminal gangs, particularly youth gangs. And uh, they have an increased demand for weapons because the um, level of violence in the Netherlands has increased. And so the Dutch police uh, have told me that they sometimes stop little vans or uh, cars full of weapons from the Western Balkan. So that's also an important part. And they're also involved in other drug trades. So it's not just synthetic drugs and cocaine, but it's also, for example, heroin and, and cannabis. What do they do with their illicit proceeds? What are some of the ways in which they launder um, this, this money? So one of the most common ways, I would say, is in real estate uh, or in the construction sector. Of course, that happens a lot back home. So uh, criminal groups uh, in the Western Balkan would, for example, whitewash their money in, in big cities like Belgrade or Tirana, Banja Luka, um, Sarajevo. But they also increasingly use the, uh, the Dutch um, legal e economy to whitewash profits. So you would have to think about, again, real estate or uh, services in the hospitality sector or business services. And secondly, uh, we also have the largest Havala system in Europe, which is kind of an informal uh, money transfer system where you don't need to take records, which is, of course, incredibly useful for criminals who don't want to leave any trail. Um, currently, uh, a recent estimate was that there is around 10 billion euros going around in this informal money transfer uh, system uh, in the Netherlands. Amsterdam is the, the Havala capital, and according to police, it really is also uh, used a lot by either terrorists or, or criminals across the world. Now, my last question to you, um, we've talked about how, you know, the criminal gangs and the illicit drugs trade is growing in the Netherlands and how that's sort of, you know, spreading into even increased violence. But um, on the other hand, the Netherlands also has high levels of resilience to organized crime, right? And that uh, includes international cooperation through bodies that you've just been mentioning, like Europol and you're just. Um, can you tell us how and why these Western Balkan groups are able to operate so effectively despite this and whether additional measures are needed and what kind to sort of counteract this growing issue? So, of course, Dutch law enforcement uh, has done quite a lot to try and stop this illicit trade, uh, particularly in the ports. They have invested a lot. There has been uh, many seizures, great arrest operations in recent years. 
uh, one of the most important advancements, I would say, is, is increased collaboration with the, the police and the customs authorities in Ecuador, uh, where a lot of the drugs are coming from. Uh, but there is still a lot of room for improvement. Uh, one of the key challenges for the groups from the Western Balkan is specifically, according to the Dutch police, is that they don't have massive amount of capacity to deal with these groups. They're, they only have, at the moment, two liaison officers um, that are focused on the Western Balkan and are able to speak the language. Um, and they are really missing that language and contextual uh, understanding um, that is needed to understand these groups in, in, um, in a better way. Um, and so that results in kind of shoestring operations, police authorities have told me. Uh, and I think another big problem, of course, that we need to improve are our scanner uh, capabilities at the port. It's not an easy problem to fix because of the volume of trade that is coming in uh, on a yearly basis. So checking all, all the containers is simply impossible. So we really need to improve the detection and risk assessment uh, capabilities, which the Dutch government is currently trying to do with help of the European Union. And I think there's also a large problem, which is the demand for drugs within Europe and within the Netherlands itself. That is definitely something that needs to be addressed, uh, that we need to reduce the demand of such illicit substances. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Index. A special thank you to Ingrid for being part of the discussion. Head over to the Global Initiative website to read GI Talks article called Western Balkan Criminal Groups are Important Players in the Netherlands. And you can also learn more about criminality and resilience in the Netherlands on the Global Organized Crime Index. Just head over to ocindex.net.